Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. You must be the new apprentice. What are you, nine, ten years old? Plenty old enough to start work and I really need the help. You can sit down there and watch a decent ship carpenter at work. That's me, Matilda Barb, mistress carpenter and your new boss. The owner of the shipyard will be round soon. That's Master Hugo Boldefair, appointed by good King Henry III himself. He's been king for nigh on 20 years now, since the year of our Lord 1216, and he's been fighting the French for nearly all that time. When Master Hugo comes round, I'm asking him for his approval of you. We need his say-so because you'll be sleeping in the back room, behind you, just over there. I thought that would put a smile on your face. Sleeping in the nice and dry in a timber and stone building rather than that straw hut you were born in. Better than being a peasant and working in the fields all your life for absolutely nothing, isn't it? And then having half the food you've grown taken by the Lord of the Manor and the church. Ha! Huh, that's more or less slavery, that is. And there's more good things about being a ship's carpenter's apprentice just now too. King Henry is out to beat these French over the side of the channel and he's building ships for his navies so fast that ship carpenters like me and you in 10 years time have got work coming out of our ears. Oh lad, it's not really coming out of my ears, silly boy. That's just an expression we've got for loads of work. You can see the ships being built all along the coast here. We're building two ships for King Henry right here in Shoreham for a start. We're so much in demand that when you finish your apprenticeship, you can earn as much as threepence a day, twice as much as me, and just the same as my dead husband, Robert. God bless his soul. Mind you, it's not cheap being a carpenter of any sort. The townsfolks have cottoned on to how much we make, so we have to help uh, pay them out. For instance, same as me, those carpenters, or chippies we call them, the working on extending St Mary de Hora, the parish church. They have to pay to take apprentices on. No need to smile again, lad. I didn't mean I was going to pay you. I have to pay the parish a whole shilling. That's five pence for every year of your apprenticeship and that's likely to take a good ten years, you being so young. And I have to provide your food and pay the monks at the Priory for your education too. You'll not make a master carpenter if you starve to death or you don't learn your numbers. Still, I don't mind really. You seem a nice lad and the good Lord didn't see fit to provide me with a son of my own. So I need someone to pass my skills on to. I've got a daughter, Eleanor, but Gerns aren't allowed to be apprentices. Right lad, I'm fed up waiting for Master Hugo. You can start work now without waiting for him. Otherwise you'll never earn your supper. As the church have told us it's a fish day, so Mistress Eleanor is boiling up some oysters and monkfish. Oh, she makes a lovely pottage, does my Eleanor. She'll have cabbage and leeks from the garden and parsley, sorrel, garlic and hyssop from the hedgerow. And she might even have an egg or two if our N Isabel has performed. <laughs> now, let's get you started on mixing the glue. <laughs> 